research groups at the Broad Institute. We've been, uh, I've been running the research group for about two years, and at the Broad, we're developing new technologies, primarily using a taxi to uh, study gene regulation within single cells. So we were quite interested in um, the non-coding part of the genome. The genome, uh, a couple percentage of the, of the human genome at least, encodes genes, and these genes are, as we all know, are differentially expressed in different cell types. But um, our understanding of the part of the genome that regulates the expression of those genes, uh, to what level those genes are expressed, is pretty uh, understudied, at least at the time um, when we started developing these assays. So our primary goal was to start to find and define different parts of the genome that are controlling the expression of genes, and in that process we're, we're very interested in, in measuring its openness. As you would imagine, parts of the genome that are active in regulating genes need to be bound by things like proteins like transcription factors uh, that recruit things like RNA polymerase, with, which cause gene expression. So we thought that a very simple measurement of gene regulation would be just to measure how open the genome is. So what a taxi uniquely does is it's a direct measure of how open a piece of DNA is, and we think of that openness as a proxy of how easily a transcription factor can bind those parts of the genome. And the way we do that is um, we use this, this enzyme called TN5 transposase, which will bind open chromatin and also insert a DNA sequencing adapters, which we use uh, to tag regions of the genome that are open. After that, we remove the proteins from the sample, uh, we PCR amplify, and we create a DNA sequencing library that we can then put on a Lumina sequencer. After doing that, we get back uh, sequencing data, which is in the format of a FASTQ, so reads, and then we do a secondary analysis, which defines cells, to create a matrix of cells by peaks, um, where the values represents how open that region of the genome was per cell. And after that, um, um, my lab has developed this uh, computational tool called ChromeVar, which we use to cluster the cell types, um, but we're still developing computational tools to, to do different things with the data once we get it. I think um, the community is still taking up this assay and, and really exploring that exact question. Um, for the most part, um, I think uh, researchers are choosing between uh, different technologies, but usually defaulting to a TAC-seq as the first or possibly even the next experiment to do after something like RNA-seq. And the reason for that is because unlike traditional chromatin measurements where you need millions of cells to start to measure the chromatin dynamics, you can do this in individual cells or even tens of thousands of cells. So that really opens up a, a huge field of applications, usually around looking at rare cell types within the human body, cell types that, that you could not extract in the millions, right? And one of the cases where we're really excited about the potential going forward is understanding uh, tumor heterogeneity where you can't really know in advance what cell types there are and you, there's no clear way on isolating those cell types. So one application that at least I'm very excited about is understanding uh, chromatin dynamics in primary tumors. So really I think the sky's the limit for the, for the applications for single cell attack seek and I think time will just uh, tell us uh, how far we can take it. They've been um, working with us uh, both to apply the technology to questions that we have in immune cell biology, as well as uh, helping us learn the ropes on, on the technology in general. And, and our aspect of the collaboration has been um, pretty heavy in the bioinformatics. Uh, my group uh, has developed computational tools to, to study and analyze these data, and together I think we've made a really great team.